one of my coping mechanisms was I always thought that there was somebody worse than me. I, I think that really sort of stemmed from the fact that I didn't actually feel physically unwell until they actually did things to me. Then, of course, I felt unwell. And the, re the recovery for the operations, yes, you feel unwell. My Addison's disease went completely bonkers, and that made me feel unwell. But actually, I always thought there's somebody worse than me, and I think it's a very good way of keeping perspective uh, to actually say, yeah, okay, today, you know, there's people who are going to be sicker than you, they're going to have more struggles than you. So, you know, feel lucky for what you've actually got, which people will say, well, that's crazy. How can you feel lucky? You can feel lucky. Um, so keep it in perspective. Uh, one thing I used was actually other people are in worse condition than me. The next thing was don't do much, don't do research on the internet. Um, I was warned by my uh, consultant to not look on the web because it's full of drug companies pushing their drugs and they will write things which are super, super scary and it will just send your head into a, a different zone. Also, I have avoided sort of news articles and it's amazing when you, it's, it's like if you've bought a red car you don't think there's red cars and you buy one and everyone's got a red car. It's the same thing as soon as you get sort of, you, you actually, I was said, look, you've, you've had cancer. It's everything I looked at was survivor stories, you know, stories of going to, to, to the uh, appointments and it coming back. That's the biggest fear. That is the biggest fear is what happens if it comes back? Can I really put myself through this again? The simple answer is yes. And why? is because you have to. You have to do it. There's other people relying on you. You can't let them down. You've got to actually, you've actually got to do your part of actually managing the fear because without you helping them, then there's gonna, they're, they're gonna have a problem. So if you do it for yourself, do it for other people. That's where you need to actually be strong. You only have to be strong. You, people don't know how strong they are until they actually need to be. And then they're super surprised by how resilient they are. That is actually a gift of human, of the human nature. One of the things I did um, was actually, I set new goals. Um, and I think everyone who's come through a traumatic experience like that will set goals because they've got a new perspective on life. So those things which they, the, the what ifs, the what ifs, which were always doubting their decisions and not doing it, people say, screw it, you know, I've, <laughs> I've been there. I might as well do it and actually have fun because if I end up back there, I don't want to be there and think, oh, I wish I'd done this and that uh, and other things. So actually, it's a really good way of almost wiping the slate clean. And it's your time to be creative. Hey, there's no constraints on you anymore. Go mad. You know, do whatever your new hobbies is. You want to jump over a plane or anything else. One of the things I wanted to try and will do is the paragliding because I'm very interested in kites and I told my uh, consultant that and he said that's great he said I've spent the last six months or so trying to save your life and now you're actually going to be in the sky and you're going to kill yourself that way I was thinking well yeah but I'm not but it's, it's it was an interesting way to actually see that actually the humor there was 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 good as I said earlier, in the second stage, the waiting is the, the worst part. It doesn't get any easier afterwards because the waiting for the appointments, uh, etc. But reading helps. Uh, reading motivational things, uh, inspirational bits, talking on, the, on websites and, and, and forums like this, watching this type of video, hopefully is going to actually give you that extra push to actually think, yeah, today I'm going to sit up a bit bigger, a bit stronger, and I'm going to go for it. It's that sort of thing. This is why I wanted to help people. Um, the appointments, when they come around, it's almost like I have to have to actually get myself mentally prepared. I have to put all away the boxes of all my emotional debris and everything away. I have to put them all away, pack them up. I have to get myself almost like a warrior again. I've, I've, I've had different sort of a, attitudes and approaches to going to these appointments sometimes I'm really sort of like focused and I'm like shut everything out and I'm, I'm there and I'm, I'm actually trying to to sort of push through it other times I've tried to take a really laid-back attitude and that 
hasn't worked for me the laid back attitude because whenever I've actually done that I've always got news I didn't want to hear and so it knocks me down and it takes me a week or two to get back up again from it so I have found the best way is actually to go in super prepared in my mind almost my body is ready it feels like an athlete that if there is bad news it's just going to bounce off and I'm thinking okay let's do it how are we going to get, how are we going to solve this um, Interestingly, you'll see different type of coping mechanisms, and I, I like watching people. And in the treatment room, when you're waiting to go in, there's different types of people. There's the person who just talks and talks and talks, and they want you to actually engage with them. They want to tell you about their experiences. For me, I, I'm more of a shut-off type person, so I recognize it's not an irritation from them, it's just because they're terrified and they're just doing what they can. Me on the other hand I, send, I tend to sort of go more focused on the internal side and I, that's my coping mechanism. I don't know which is good or bad. They help me. Find your own one, stick to it and you should actually then be able to pull yourself through. What I found it, 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 during the actual uh, cancer stage when you were being treated, you got to be um, got to be selective of the people you tell um, because first of all you may not get the response you, you thought you might. I told one of my relatives who is from a couple of generations above me and her response was actually at the time very bullish. It was basically they don't know what they're talking about, there's nothing wrong with you, you look fine and for me it was terrible it was it was the worst type of uh of approach somebody could have taken with me because i was fighting my fight i was trying to be brave and it was almost like well you're not being brave there's nothing wrong with you so be careful who you tell because people react in different ways um also it was only my only my very close circle of friends who know so this sort of video is almost a bit of a coming out uh exercise for me so i'm actually you may not be able to tell but I'm actually really quite nervous because it's sharing something which is actually very deeply rooted in me and a lot of people won't even realise I'd been ill because that's the way I cope with things. Um, so be careful who you tell because um, it's a, that's a, a learning experience. And I think finally, um, you've actually now had the ultimate experience of actually knowing what's real and what's important and what isn't important. So live your life with that in mind. Live your life with that fear, that, that emotion, and actually turn it into something which is good. For me, I wanted to actually help people. For me, that was my passion. And if I can help people by sharing my story, that's what I want to do. Um, it's also pretty good therapy to talk, um, actually. Um, so thank you for listening, guys. Um, but that's one of the other big reasons why I set up the, the website and there's a, a Facebook page for people who are, have cancer, uh, who are battling with it, survived it, and relatives to actually talk. Sometimes you don't need advice. Sometimes you just need to be able to talk to somebody. There are things which actually you cannot say and talk about with your closest relatives. You just can't because it's too over emotionally overwhelming for them to hear. So at that time, this is the time when you can come to this site where you can talk to me and you can look talk on the, on the Facebook um, group and you can actually talk there. It's good. It's, it's a good way to actually express things to a third party in a nice, safe environment. That's why I created the separate Facebook group for people with cancer and their relatives because actually it's it's got to be focused on that and it's going to be a place where it's kind and it's supportive. So those questions, those things of oh what happens if I'm not here anymore and those sort of things, selling your house to provide for somebody else, they are things you can't really talk about because it's emotional for you and it's emotional for them. So if it helps, that is why I am here and that's why we're here to try and help you. I hope that actually you managed to get something out of this. I hope I haven't rambled on a bit because I know it's a personal thing here. 
But I'm hoping that you will be able to redefine your fear and I hope that you will be able to go and help and inspire other people.